right, so this is our next episode, the next two weeks with Bandit, and I have Mia, who's working on her certification here at Rider Horsemanship. She's also been working with Bandit. And the reason why I chose to have Mia on Bandit working is it's really important when you're rehabilitating a horse that it's not just you working with the horse, that we need to make sure that he's okay with someone other than the main trainer like myself because I can offer this horse a lot more confidence than most most riders and most handlers and Mia certainly can too but she doesn't have the skill sets yet that's why she's working here obviously and, and all of the confidence in knowing how to handle situations yet and I want to make sure that as we develop this horse as we are rehabilitating him and restarting him that he can handle someone that isn't always sure of themselves. Just like his owner who's a more beginner rider and she's had an accident with him and that's why he came here, I need to build her, his owner's confidence, but I also have to make sure that this horse becomes tolerant and not tolerant in a negative way where he just tolerates whatever you do. I don't, I don't mean it in the context, I want him to be able to tolerate you making mistakes. I want, to, I want him to be able to tolerate you losing your balance. And um, so that's what we're here to, to look at. And also this will be great for uh, Bandit's owner to be able to view Mia working with him because she has been working with him. We've been sharing that together. So Mia's going to start uh, our typical lunge. There's no liberty or free lunging in this video this, this week. We are just going to be showing how responsive rhythmic and relaxed. I keep talking about the three major R's to training. How responsive is your horse without being too quick, nervous, or anxious? Can they respond with ease? So it's the quality, it's the quality of the work. And I'm, I'm going to come on over here in the camera. I've got my lunge whip just to keep the herd of horses that's out in our training area away from the dressage area. So it's really important that Bandit responds with ease. And for us, we show response within three seconds. We want to develop the horse so that they can respond within three seconds. So as I'm standing over here with the camera, um, and I'm going to be the horse, and right now my owner or my handler has just asked me to back up. So responding with ease will look like one, two, three, fluidity. So responding quickly, oh my God, is not what I'm looking for. I don't want rushing, I don't want nervous or anxious. I want this horse to respond with ease. And then how rhythmic is he? That also will show how relaxed he is. So we're going to look at a walk, maybe a, a half of a walk, energetic walk Mia, or a full circle walk. Three uh, circles of trot with energy and rhythm that lead into three revolutions of the canter with energy and rhythm and relaxation. And you'll be doing that three times left and three times right, both at the trot and the canter. So go ahead, hon, and he's sleeping, which is great. So she'll just wake him up a little. Good, very nice. Good, very nice, beautifully done. Bandit is coming along beautifully. Now he, he, pulled his shoulder a little bit. It'll be his right shoulder. Earlier this week playing in the big 15 acre field with the big herd, my horses. And so we've been doctoring that with hot, hot compresses, steam. That's the best thing in liniment. And it's not bad, but if we see a little bit of head bobbing, just a little, I didn't notice it yesterday when I worked with him and rode him. But if we do see it, um, you know, we're just not pushing too hard. That's all I'm saying. Go ahead, Mia. I'm going to get the horses out of the way. Go on, Bibs. Good. So one of the things with Bandit that's just so awesome to see this episode, this is two weeks from the last time we filmed, is how well he's, he's accepting contact around his nose. Beautiful. And how much more ease and confidence he has backing up and not being stressed with a gaping mouth and lots of resistance and then being able to maintain nice trots in a figure eight trot to walk transitions to halt and backing up without trying to throw us into the gate or pull us now we're down here in the dressage arena and we're not up closer to the main gate to the barn and um, the last time we filmed, there I don't think there were any horses in here. And Bandit is a buddy sour horse. He's food sour. He gets anxious with food. 
he's buddy sour and he's barn sour so those buddy and barn sour do not make for a, a, a good trail horse so we're going to work on all of those and when he's out here by himself he he doesn't have as much focus and so we bring the horses out and we take them away during certain training good mia and whenever you think he's set up for a canter just go right ahead while i keep talking <clears throat> so he's um he's done pretty well with no horses and with horses and the dressage arena used to really bother him because it was so far away from the barn good girl beautiful look at that nice canter so push him out push his belly out a little bit more get a bigger canter circle one two three good lots of ease lots of ease so bringing a horse up into bigger movement and adrenaline is so key to testing where they are in their emotional agility a lot of us rush our horses into these bigger movements and speed and they're not ready emotionally or physically balanced so the fact that bandit shows let's just pause for a minute please you can just halt the fact that bandit shows responsiveness rhythm and and relaxation in the trot and in the canter says a lot about his emotional agility his ability to control and his ability to manage control and navigate emotion which is attached to adrenaline so they're prey animals okay so anytime they run in the wild it's for flight it is for survival folks people need to understand that we don't understand domesticated horses so when you're training them we know we work we ease them into these speeds and back them down approach and retreat until the horse feels really confident and can start thinking while they're in that adrenaline not just reacting when you get a horse that whether you're lunging or riding that speeds up rushes bolts bucks whether they're lunging or under saddle they are not comfortable mentally or possibly physically and so it's your job to back and ease off of that and, and go back into the work with much more connection and awareness of where your horse needs to be so what i'd like to see is that you get a little uh, more responsive canter because what's great is if I get in here, I'm gonna, this horse is gonna respond a lot differently than Mia and, and a lot better. But Mia, you know, we're also helping this horse develop for his owner who's not gonna know this method very well. She's gonna come here and study for a few days before he ends up going back home in a month. But so we have to make sure that he, you know, he's, he's pretty, uh, pretty responsive and pretty connected. So that's why, again, I have Mia working with him. Um, now let me have him for a second and just show a little different. I'll just have you step back. So my energy is a lot different, isn't it, people? <laughs> Very clear. And look at the expression I have. So just with the power of intention and opening up your chakras, which is what this work is all about, I, he gets it. So good boy. That's energy. Good. I didn't use my whip, did I, folks? Now I'm going to ask him into the canter. There we go. Good boy. Now he needs me to work with him like this. He needs me to be very assertive and very clear. So that he can also find comfort and feel safe with this clarity and this pressure. Good. So he doesn't have a lot of rhythm or regularity right now. He's slowing up and speeding, slowing down and speeding up. Good boy, good boy. I asked for the trot and now I will ask for him to come in. Good, thank you. That's the power of the mind and the energy. He's very connected to that, but he's not 100% confident with me being really clear. Clarity is also a form of pressure, but I need that. That's why I let him work. Mia's got to work with him too, and I have to work with him. It just can't be me, and it just can't be Mia right now. And that is truly one of the best ways to rehabilitate a horse. It can't just be done by one person, especially the professional, the one that is more masterful in application and technique. You've got to be able to try them out. And unfortunately, his owner lives in Minnesota, not Florida. 
So if she was closer, she'd be coming for lessons and we'd be able to work through that of her not quite being confident and knowing what to do. Because a horse like him will be comfortable with that and possibly take advantage of it. And then he has to be okay with my energy, right? He's got to be okay with this. I want to see how responsive he can be and not fly off the handle, pull, good. Keep his connection because this tells me his level of confidence. This is about confidence. Working with Mia, he's more comfortable. That's great. We want, it. we want that consistency. He's got to have that level of consistency and repetition to build his, obviously, comfort and safety. But then I got to come in here and bring it up a notch if she's not able to. I still need to. He's still got to work with a different person. And test him. This is his, our feedback, our information. Can he handle it? Yeah, he goes right back down to relaxation. How is this important? Because in life, shit happens. You can't prepare for it. The biggest thing in life is how well do you handle it? And that's what we're here to help this horse. Is st a tree could fall right now. Deer could come crashing out. Dogs could be barking. Is he going to fly off the handle? Or is he going to go, whoo, what was that? So I need to be able to bring that energy up, get him going. How well does he handle it? How well does he handle stimuli and adrenaline? That is the key to preparing this horse for trail riding. It's not these obstacles and it's not the trail. It's how much he trusts me and how well he can cope with that kind of adrenaline rush. All right, come on back and you can work in the other direction and then we'll get on. Good boy. I was on his right side. Okay. Let's yep, let's just do left. Good boy. Thank you, buddy. And see, he's very comfortable with me as grounded energy. When I first came into the picture to take him five minutes ago, he didn't. He went with Mia. He didn't want to stay with me. So he's got to get more comfortable with my energy, with energy. Good boy. I'm just going to go back around into the mounting block. So he is getting better with gates. He was much better leaving the round pen with me on his back yesterday and then riding out in the training field. He did not rush through the open gate of the round pen at all. He was fantastic. And we were by ourselves out here and it was dinner time. However, he got anxious going to the main gate. Good girl. So we still have to work on that because it is part discipline and obedience and also his anxiety. Come on, get him going. Get a little bit more better bend. Kick his hip out and pull his nose in. Good girl, good. So he's not leaning so much in, in tracking to the left. Good, very nice. So let's just push him out a little further, Mia. Keep him at the trot, please. Push him out a little further. Get more of his, his eye if it means you gotta bite his butt and get him to stop. Bite his butt. So he's got to, you got to get to a point where he takes you a little more seriously and asks a question, which is part of that connection. Good boy. Good, Mia. Good intention. Good intention shift. Much better. Much better. And just keep pushing his belly out so you can shape that arc. So this is part of our self-carriage. We really need him more straight on that circle, not leaning, that inside hind leg is his weight-bearing leg for balance. And that eye, the more he looks at us, looks at Mia, the more he gives the shoulder in, which will help his carriage, help his balance, help his strength, his hind end strength. Good, let's get a canter again and then we'll get ready to ride. Good, excellent. Good. So we've been really building his cardio and his muscle, his strength for this small canter. That's beautiful, hon. You're done with that. That's beautiful. Lots of reward. Lots of love and praise. And I love the softness in his eye. Very nice. Very, very nice. Recording. All right. We are back on. Mia's going to show how nicely Bandit picks her up at the mounting block. <clears throat> yeah, good boy. He comes in for that hug. Good 
Good boy. And you're going to definitely pull your reins up and have contact because that's the safest way to get on. Have contact in your rein. I'm going to come back into the dressage and we're going to film the next 15 minutes of your ride as if it is a lesson because this is how we warm up when we are training horses, whether we're starting them or restarting them. Great connection. Mounting block was such a huge issue for this horse when he came here. Nice and soft. So we're not asking him to do anything right now but stand quietly while we gather our equipment and don't let him walk off. Yeah, that's okay. It's just a little bit of his anticipation. So let's see if you can soften him and back him up to the mounting block again. Soften him. Get his nose down on the vertical. Good. And just relax. Excellent. So when a horse thinks that they have to leave when you didn't ask with your seat or your intention, then we're just going to go back to relaxation and change that for him. He didn't do anything wrong. He's not going to get corrected ever for that, ever. We just need to change it so he doesn't think he has to do that. Nice, nice soft mouth, nice soft eye, beautiful cocked foot. So Mia, what we do show them is we work on seeing how soft he is on the vertical as well as a little bit of lateral breaking at the pole before we ever walk off. If a horse is tense people, not only will they not look like this at the mounting block, they'll be up here and you'll feel the tension and the tightness in their back and in their neck. What we want to do now, even though he's relaxed, is we want to be able to take those reins and take his head and move it without having to move his feet. This is another pre-flight once you get on. How, can you do this with your horse? Can you supple your horse and not have your horse think they've got to automatically go or push through or rush through those aids? And again, this is a restart. When you start a young horse, they don't know any different. They're just like putty in your hands. So he's being restarted, so I want you to gather up contact and see how well he responds without moving his feet. Nice. Keep that hold though. Keep the hold. Come here, Sid. And don't keep him straight too, please. And bring your hands up a little higher. There you go. And then when he gives on the vertical without moving his feet, and just stay with them. So he's the type of horse that just thinks that every time you pick up those reins from his previous training, that he has to do something. And she's not asked him one thing to do with her seat. She's sitting very grounded and now she wants to be able to take his head and move it any which way. So you're going to ask him now laterally, bring his head up and laterally. Can he just break at the pole? Good. Not all the way around. So you're going to keep him straight, please. And ask him to the right and keep asking back and forth. I want back and forth and don't let them bend too much. We don't want over flexion. We just want them breaking at the pole right here. Good. To see how he starts to wander, you can just see in his eye he's looking around and he's moving his feet. So get a little more contact, be a little more assertive, keep him straight and ask him to bend at the pole. So you can just see in his eye a little bit of his uncertainty and that's why he's backing up. Bring him back up here please because he's not sure. He's still not sure. So ask him on the vertical first and hold. Hold. Now ask him left. Ask him right and keep asking. Keep asking until he can stand quietly. Keep asking, please. Look, there's the mouth tension. So see, this we've done a lot of just this, people, without even riding because he is so worried. And you'll see his mouth tighten and you'll see him have a, the displaced behavior where he starts to, it looks like he wants to yawn. He's not grinding his teeth, but he's really tight. So this is about the mindset. Why would I want to ride that if he's that distracted and that worried? So let's get him soft and trusting right here at the halt because that's the level of uh, relaxation and the mindset that I want to take into the ride. And it works. Good boy. Good boy. Now love and leave him alone. So that got a lot better. And this is part of our problem when we go to open the gate. 
he can't focus. This would be what you would call a horse with ADD or very fractious. And horses aren't that way by nature, so that's created by, by previous training. It's a lack of confidence, bottom line. So we're going to keep working with him till he relaxes and he, in the consistency of the work and the praise and the softness. He hasn't done anything wrong. There's no correcting right now. So before you get ready to walk off, let's see if you can gather up your reins again this, and test this again. Can he come on the vertical and be still? Just hold, please. Hold and breathe. Hold until he gets still. Hold. Good. There's the mouth a little bit. Just stay with them, Mia. There's the mouth. Good. Excellent. 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 Good. That eye. Do you see how soft he got in the eye and he relaxed his mouth and relaxed his top line? That's what we want him to take into the ride. That's the way we want him to feel. Gosh, people, sometimes slowing down everything is the name of the game. People go way too fast with training. They blow these horses, especially if you have a hot-blooded, which means a very sensitive horse. Okay, let's do the vertical again, and then left to right. Lateral. Hands up higher, please. Good girl. And left to right now. Stay, stay, stay. Good. Go to the right, please. Good. Until he softens. Stay, stay. Until he softens. Good. Go back to left. Keep doing this until he doesn't move his feet. There's the mouth. There. Yeah. Ah. Can you see that, camera person? Yep. Keep doing it. This is huge, people. You got to catch this. This is everything. This is everything. We just hit the hornet's nest. And this is what we've been working with in the last two weeks. So what happens is yesterday my ride on Bandit was fabulous, fabulous, smooth, trot to walk transitions, figure eight, halt to back up, soft. But what happens too is this horse doesn't have consistency. He doesn't have consistency because he has too many flashbacks and triggers. So now he's got a different rider. I mean, Mia rides him too, but Mia has a different experience than I do on him. And what we're restarting this horse, retraining this horse for, is that it doesn't matter who rides this horse, that he's going to be the same for any rider. That's foundation. And that's creating a very trusting, very confident horse. Excellent. We go as slow as this horse needs so that he can process everything, feel good about it, feel safe with it, and relax. And the horse will tell you, look at his soft eye and look at his soft body. Excellent, Mia. Good job. Lots of licking and chewing, lots of releasing. Excellent. All right. Let's walk on. And we're only going to use half the arena. Let's just start at A, come up to F, to B, and cut across to E. So we'll just use this uh, 20 meters, half of the small arena. And what Mia is going to show is how we do our warm-up, which is we work on energy at the walk so that the horse stretches. Like Pilates, when you stretch and lengthen the muscles, you create more strength and elasticity. And this is about balance as well, and it's also about longevity and soundness in your horse. And about work ethic. We also need him to become what? Responsive. And we need him to have a healthy work ethic. So Mia, one, two, three, let's work on a bigger walk with your hips. He doesn't listen, cluck or tap. Excellent. Bigger walk than that. So the walk, a working walk needs to feel like a big lengthened stride and to point where the horse almost feels like it's ready to trot. So that would be a medium walk. One, two, three. Good. Excellent. The reason why we carry a long dressage whip, and this is the purpose of the whip, people. It's not to correct right now, and it ain't to punish. That whip, when it's used correctly, it's always on the inside track. So it's on the inside of the arena. Inside is tracking to the left so that it can touch and tickle 
back behind his left hind above his hock so it can come back and tickle that leg so the leg stretches even more and stretches even more which would be his left leg so Mia tap back to where his hock would be and also Mia doesn't know footfall yet but if I was on him I would be feeling his hind leg footfall and every time his left hind was getting ready to leave the ground I would tickle his left hock because when the leg is ready to leave and you tickle you can influence the reach you can't influence the reach when it's planted people you can only influence footfall when it is getting ready to leave or in the air so that's an advanced um, knowledge and we have not worked on that get a bigger walk than that please so bigger walk is also working on his attention and obedience his cooperation his stretching it's mental and physical so right now it's about the walk more than anything and once she has consistency this horse is responsible for maintaining that energy so once we have that and he's going straight he's got some rhythm we will work on suppling him which is the shoulder in so Mia when you start to pass the camera and, and hook your left here I want you to start to supple him three strides of shoulder in please good keep him straight good and get that nose down get him more relaxed please so work by squeezing the reins give him different leverage get the energy do not lose your energy there you go keep him going forward and keep that nice softness so what I'd like to explain right now is when I was riding him yesterday um, I had suppling I had a consistent level head I had softness the entire time and again when a horse has a solid foundation any rider should be able to get on them and be able to ask for this and not have any resistance or opposition and he still does so what that says is if he doesn't quite understand what Mia is asking of him there's two things actually if he doesn't understand it he's gonna get tight and worried or if he doesn't want to do it because she's not clear then you have a lack of obedience and we need to make sure he is confident and understands and we need to make sure he is cooperative which is obedient let's go big walk don't lose your energy ever so if you're losing energy you're pulling I don't want you pulling I want you to massage those reins and lift his shoulder that's a feel and timing exercise so Mia's getting her lesson in advanced horsemanship so it's a feel and timing people your horse should not slow down when you ask for the shoulder in good girl Mia gorgeous gorgeous keep asking because he can go at a trot all the way around here so this is the basic training level of classical dressage and if you master this at the walk the walk is guess what people the most important gate especially if you study European dressage not American we cheat and we're not we don't treat our horses well so the most important layer to this training pyramid training scale good now get that at a bigger walk is right here because when you master this you take all of these qualities into your gates your trot and your canter let's go get him to be working his body correctly building the appropriate strength and balance beautiful keep asking beautiful 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 uh-huh when you're ready change direction please and when you go in a circle of course Mia knows to keep the symmetry of her circle and the energy of her circle in the softness and suppling change direction please excellent excellent no we don't want a horse that's too bendy either people because that's a level of avoidance from training we want a horse that's straight between our aids and soft and supple we don't want a horse that bends way too easy and is too flexible pick up your Sydney come pick up your energy please at the walk good
And now you've got to work on softening him on this side. It's got a little wider eye, a little bit more um, uncertainty. When the head lowers, you've got a softer, softer mind, a mind that's more at ease. Excellent. So keep engaging him with your aids and all of the things you're asking him to do because that also develops the mind of discipline. He's got to stay focused. The ears are on you. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Good job, my dear. When you're ready, let's do three strides of trot. But get him nice and soft so he moves into that movement with relaxation in his body and balance. And this is part of our Riding is One clinic. Nice and slow and easy. And we work with where the horse is so that they can master this, both in their mind and in their body. Bring your hands up. Remember, lift those shoulders and ask for him to lower that nose. How, how well that worked for you the other day. I think with Cloud, right? Or which horse? I can't remember. <laughs> One of these paints. All right. I'd like more contact, please. And then you're going to push him into that trot. More contact. Bend your elbows. Bring it back. Lift up. Good. And push forward. One, two, three. Let's go. Come on. Now start over again. So what happens with Bandit is he freezes, people. There's not a lazy horse. He freezes. I see the tightness in his mouth when she asked for the trot and he froze. Let's do it again. If he doesn't pick it up immediately, get it going and then ask, good girl, good, work on suppling, good girl, push. Just push, just keep him trotting right now, but get him to supple and soften and lower that head. Good. Outside rain, good, excellent, excellent. Good. Good, good, good. Keep going, keep going. Good, and that's been hard. He has not been a very responsive horse under saddle. He's been frozen. And then he goes into that flight mode. Beautiful shoulder, there you go. Good. Now, what I'd like to also say about our training is that he pulled his shoulder this week a little bit, running with the herd. We noticed it, it's Friday, about three days ago. We started our, our hot compress, but the work that we do stretches. And if he uses his body correctly, he will be using his hind end more, which will give him more freedom in his shoulders and allow him to lift up and not pull himself. When they pull, they pull muscles. So lift up and push. Lift up and push. Lift your hands up. Push. Push with that seat. That's how you develop the canter, too. Nice and slow and underneath. Excellent. Good. Let's go back down to a nice walk transition. And then a halt and a back up and prepare him to be soft. Excellent. Good boy. He's very engaged. I love it. Good. Three strides back. Beautiful. So what we had to work on, remember, I think two days this week, it was nothing but the mounting block, the flexion, the um, halt, and the back up. That's all we did for two days straight with this horse. You could not get him to back straight. He'd be stressed, his mouth would go, and he'd go out like this, and then he'd go like this, and he was just all over the place. We have to fix that. He's got to be okay with contact. That was beautiful. Let's do a little bit more. That was... Nah, he backed up beautifully straight though. Good job, my dear. Great job. That was her task to get him to this point. Excellent. Let's change direction and pick up the trot immediately. And work on him getting really fluid, rhythmic, and soft, and supple, and you lifting that shoulder. Just a couple more minutes and we're wrapping up. He looks so nice and soft. 
and very through, lots of length. You always want to see more horse in front of you than behind you. So that means he's pushing and stretching. More horse in front of you and being able to gather it without squish it and tighten it. But of course, you know, think of the, the breed that you are working with and their natural carriage and the way they are built. So not all horses are built like our uh, quarter horse paint, I'm just going to assume. We don't know what, he ha what bloodlines he has. Or the Arab, that's going to be a lot more up here. But also bloodlines. I had an Arab that was very Western Pleasure and we have a Western Pleasure Arab here and we have another Arab. Well, I've got one too. They're much more up here. Good. Let's try it immediately. Let's go. Work on your elbows together, your hands together, hands up high and getting him your fingers to respond. Excellent. Beautiful. Get him going. More energy. I want a bigger trot, not a lazy trot where he's like scuffing along there. I want more energy. So bring your hands together and up. Get his nose down and get his butt going. Push him forward, even if you have to tickle his hiney with the whip a little bit. Excellent. Get him more. I want his rhythm of the tempo to change. There we go. So he gets more, a little more bounce and a little more forward and not dragging. Good. Good girl. And you can change that in your seat too. You dictate the tempo, Mia. How much rhythm, how much movement you want. Excellent. Get the head down, please. Hands together. And right, keep those hands above his withers. They don't need to move. And you're con good girl. Good. Get him going. Much straighter, much more through. Good, 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 good. Excellent. We are done. Thank you. That's it for this week. Excellent. Excellent. What a change. Now, Penn, a couple times past the open gate. And we'll just show how great he is um, at going, at stopping at this entrance. But go around twice, Mia. And then after twice, you'll just stop right before the gate and right in the middle of the gate. Because yesterday he didn't care and there was nobody out here. Out here. All, it was dinner time and all the horses were in except for one who I still had to work with and he was great. So once you take him past this, just do a small circle and line him up straight. But don't let him go out. Horses that have had traumatizing riding experiences always have issues with gates and anything behind them, obviously. Good. When you're ready, just get his front feet over the bottom bar so you'll be standing halfway through the gate and halt. Good boy. Oh my gosh. We had Pauline. We had nervousness. We had all over the place the last two, the last video two weeks ago. That's fantastic. I'm not going to show the big gate. Do you want to show the big gate? All right. Well, let's show where he is with the big gate because it's still a real big hit or miss with the big gate, which part of his, his learning here, all horses, is opening and closing that big gate. They have to be a partner, they have to be patient, they have to be comfortable, obedient. Okay, let's go to the big gate, camera person. You go ahead and walk up there and do it like you normally do it. And we'll be right behind you. I'm going to unhook it for you though, just to make it easier, Mia. he is okay I'll let you do that so this is so much better people we couldn't even get him up here without him of course picking up speed we um oh it's windy out look how soft and relaxed he is this is excellent come on up a little closer if you can excellent that we had to really work on him standing quietly he couldn't handle anything he'd be pawing he'd be kicking his hind end out he he just could not stand quietly so he's checking in with his person this is fantastic Now, he still had a hard time with me yesterday opening the gate, so we worked a lot on just opening the gate and shutting it and opening it and shutting it. Good boy. Oh my gosh. 
That is huge progress. Go ahead, go through. This is huge. He wouldn't stand here last week. He was so afraid. 